Hello, everyone, and welcome to Coach's Corner. My name is Art Sevilla, and I am one of the FileMaker coaches here at Richard Carlton Consulting, and this is this week's tip from the Coach's Corner. Today, we will be going over a fairly common mistake made by many FileMaker beginners that has to do with relationships and largely naming conventions. This was an issue one of my coaching customers was having recently, so I will be using his specific situation as an example with my own sample file here. So we have our sample file here, and it's a very simple database. My customer uh, is in the medical field, and he has a database that manages his patients and their case data. So we have the case records here, and he was relating a patient to the case here. Now, the problem was when he would go through and relate a patient, so let's pick George here. The patient ID here would change, but the information here that should have gone with George, so Art should be George, uh, did not come over. Now, upon further inspection, we go into his relationship graph here, and we see that we have three table occurrences. We have cases, we have patients, and we have this patients two here. Now, what was happening was when he goes here to add patient, this is pulling from patients two. So this guy right here. And this brings up the list of all the patients. That's why it's related by ID constant. We set this as one, one equals one. So we're able to see all of the patient records. Uh, we have this other occurrence over here that's related by the primary key of ID patient to the foreign key in cases over here of ID patient. And that establishes the relationship between the patient that's selected by their ID to the case record over here. So when I looked at the layout, what was happening is when he selected something in that list, he would get the correct patient ID over here, but it would not bring over the correct patient information. What was going wrong when I looked at the layout, we entered layout mode and I started looking at the fields here. And the fields, if you can see here, are coming from patients two. Now patients two is only being used for this list here to select the patient. That's to give us the full list of records for the patient's table. And he was referencing that for these fields here, which because of the way the relationship is established, they're just ID constant and ID constant, it would only pull the first record of the stack of the uh, patient's table. And that's why that name would never change, even though the ID patient up here was changing. So what we ended up having to do was to change the table to the correct one. So we go to patients one, name first, uh, and so on and so forth. So we'll do that for the rest of these here. And once we do that, if we go back into browse mode, now it shows George. shows the correct patient information here. So if we go and add a different patient, let's add Seth here. And there we go patient ID, and the rest of the information comes over. Now, that gets into the point of naming conventions. Had he followed a naming convention, or at least named these in a way that made more sense and told you what they actually were doing, he probably would have avoided that issue. Now, in this situation where we have the anchor buoy methodology being used, uh, we have a naming convention that we typically follow here at RCC, we actually have it notated in the relationship graph in FM starting point. We have this little note here that explains how we name our table occurrences in the graph. So following that, we would have something like this where the anchor would have a number. So in this case, cases is the first anchor on the graph. So we call it T01. The buoys here would have that same number followed by a letter and then the anchor table occurrence and then the table that this occurrence is referencing would be in all caps here double pipes and then the field that we're basing the relationship off of so that would be that one and then patients two over here would be t01b cases patients in caps double pipe ID constant. 
And what some people will do is afterwards, especially on these constant ones that are showing all records, they'll actually put all records so that they know what this particular occurrence is being used for and why it's being related by ID constant. So with that, coming back to the layout, when he was assigning these fields, it would have made it a little bit easier to see what he was actually referencing. And like I said, he probably would have avoided the initial issue of these being reference to the wrong table occurrence. So that about concludes this week's tip from the Coach's Corner. Uh, be sure to send us an email if you have any other further questions. Uh, if you want to learn more about FileMaker relationships, definitely check out our training video course. And also get your free copy of Starting Point. It's fully unlocked. Go to www.fmstartingpoint.com and get your free copy today. Thank you.